Good morning, fans. Privateer FX. Coming at you on a real slow Monday here, 8th of May. Not much news over the weekend, not much movement um, in FX. We've had a um, weekend to digest non farms uh, and what that means. And I guess all the focus now uh, moves to. CPI this week in the U.S. Of course, Bank of England, uh, who are likely to raise uh, 25 basis points, is on tap. And I don't think there's much out in Europe um, worth noting. But the sentiment is weaker dollar. Um, the story is weaker dollar. The question is, is how short um, is the market? Um, I don't know. It's, uh, we could go a lot of different ways on this. Let's first look at Euro. Didn't do much on Friday. Jagged down to 67. Closed at 15. Through 50 uh, going into this week. Um, oh, yeah, French holiday today. God bless him. Um, <coughs> through 50. Uh, Going into probably a weaker dollar with with the UK uh, going to raise should be interesting, uh, and if CPI comes in soft, let's say four seven four point seven percent four point eight percent one eleven's your horse, right? This is a, we've been waiting for this level for a while. Um, in all likelihood, this goes over CPI, which makes it almost impossible to trade cleanly. That's the way FX works, so you might as well prepare for it now. Um, core short euro going into Wednesday. So, God, two days. But we really got nothing going on beforehand, so it looks very fucking rangy. Um, some bullshit FOMC stuff. Trying to accumulate euros. Uh, get long euros. Hopefully you're still long cable. Um, cable gave us what we wanted to on Friday. We talked about 126 broke beforehand. We had sold. We were looking to fish for low ones to get a better um, to get a better average. This thing went down to 125.57. Um, we had 55 bids. We ended up paying 69s. Um, long cable looks okay going into the BOE. But keep in mind, if we're up at 127 or 126.90, uh, or if we get stretched, right? So here's we're we're getting to the top of of these standard deviations. Today is at 126.82. Keep in mind, these standard deviations don't work as well uh, for dollar pairs. There's just sort of a guidepost to, like, be careful. You know, some people use RSI. Some people, you know, use astrology. Uh, we, use, we use standard deviations. We like cable long. What do you do when it gets stretched? Maybe you trade it, right? Maybe you short-term trade it. I don't know, sell 95s and buy 80s. Your average has just improved 15 points. You get the you get the the notion there. Let's go to Euro Norway. We fucked this up so badly. We weren't really paying attention for ECB as this would be a big driver in Euro Norway. We got the capitulation bar in oil. This thing now has dropped 25 big figures. Um, we actually like oil higher. Unconventional. We don't have a dog in this fight. We've talked oh, we've talked about it a million times how bad we are at trading oil. Um, directionally, we often know where it's going, but actually executing that plan or like getting it exactly right seems to be a big problem for us, so we don't trade it. But this is definitely now looks like cap capitulation. This big that midnight bar, um, the mysterious midnight bar on the fourth of May spookily popped up higher with risk on on Friday. 
um, people are really worried, people are really bearish, people are really worried about growth, blah, 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 blah. Um, oil can go a lot higher just from the chart here. I don't, I don't pretend to understand the global uh, situation, but I think oil could go higher. Imagine if the war in Ukraine gets solved by some whatever miracle. This thing shoots up to 90 bucks very quickly. Um, anyway, keep an eye on oil. Gold got smashed down to 2000 We keep telling people who are asking us that we think this is going to trade 1950 before we take another run at 2080. Um, but I don't know. Well, what I do know is we're in the middle of nowhere here, so there's nothing really to do if you don't already own gold. Um, nothing to do with 2023. 2080 is a break trade. Um, and we'll be fishing for longs if we do see some sort of capitulatory smackdown. And that might be Wednesday, right? So what if, what if inflation comes in hot, hot, hot? Oh, baby, it's too hot. Too hot, baby. Gotta run for shelter. Got to run for shade. Um, if it's too hot, they're going to smash gold. Um, but we still think it's higher for longer. Um, so gold could really go down, I don't know, 19, below 1950 on a real, a real clean out. And then once that clean out has happened, whether it's higher or longer or not, there's too many shitty things going on in America. Anecdotally, I had a bunch of conversations this weekend with people about like, you know, all of our kids are going to college. And everyone always asks me, are you going to send your kids to America for college? And I'm like, look, America's broken. It's, you know, it's like, it's a thing here in Europe. Like, it, we just look at America and we just go, holy shit. That is the most, that's like the most mentally broken place we've ever seen. Um, the crime, the obesity, the politics, the anger. I mean, it's, it's not great. And, you know, one of my buddies was like, well, what if she gets into one of the flex schools, right? Up Princeton or Harvard or whatever. And it's to the point where I was like, look, it's hard to say no to that shit. Um, but also, university is free here in Switzerland. And do I want my kid? Um, even in Princeton, New Jersey, which is a beautiful place. I'm from fucking Boston. Uh, I know what Cambridge is like. Do I want my kid uh, in in America, four years on her own in her twenties? The answer is unequivocally no. Um, just anecdotally, that's that was going around. That kind of conversation was going around a lot uh, amongst my pals here uh, in Europe. All of us are in our fifties. All of us are sending our kids to, to colleges. Um, but wow, I just noted it, like sentiment for America is the lowest I've ever seen. Uh, even the Italians here in Europe, who notably love Americans, les Americano, um, are like, what's wrong with these people? Uh, so, anyway, clean up your act, America. It's fucked. Uh, I'm sick and tired of it being fucked, so somebody fix it. Uh, but for now, this is part of the story, right? This is one of the reasons we're... we're bearish dollars there's technicals and there's like fx factors like rates and trade and um, stock markets but there's also like the elephant in the room like how does the globe feel about these investment opportunities like who the fuck is going to invest in san francisco these days who the hell is going to invest in new york city these days these two places for 30 years have been like the go-to golden child investments for Middle East, for rich European pensions, for UK, China. Now it's like, why not just go buy a hotel in Munich? Sure, it's boring. You're going to make 4% a year. Um, but gee, it's safe. Um, 
and this is just where we are in the pendulum of global finance and I think I'm babbling here so I'm going to stop my little anecdotal story and leave you with this right like nothing really going on today no strong uh, powerful moves at the open to be expected we are we you know we just bought some euros here at our open which was you know around 5:30 Swiss time probably pops above 50 but then range trades I don't expect us to take a take an assault at, at 111 today um, but core long euros over the next two days try and trade yourself into a wonderful average and if you get a wonderful average going into CPI then you can take some risk right like God forbid you're long at 11005 and we're trading at 80 then you can add through 111 get a 50 average 110 50 average and if you get plunked out at 11050 then fine that's a professional that's a professional trade that's a professionally risk managed trade um, and so that's that's what we're looking to do all right shutting up now god I'm babbling today sorry about that um, good luck out there people talk to you tomorrow